Okay, so we've met the animal called P, yeah. we've met the animal called NP. Yeah. A very simple, silly question for you. I'm sure you can define this in five <laughs> seconds. Does P equal NP? Yeah, well, so that's the question, right? That's the, uh, the uh, um, you know, one of the greatest unsolved problems in all of math uh, is, is this, you know, ex now extremely easy to, to state question of are P and NP the same? Okay, it is very easy to check just from the definitions that P is a subset of NP, right? P is contained in NP. Like if you can uh, solve a problem yourself, then in particular, you can also check, you know, the, the, uh, a solution, okay? But is the converse true? So if there is a fast algorithm to check a solution, then does that mean that there is also a fast algorithm to find a solution? That is the P versus NP question. Or uh, another way of asking the question is, are there cases where brute force search is inherently unavoidable, right? Are there situations where like I give you a problem, you know, I give you a puzzle, it is easy to check a solution, and yet there is no way to find the solution other than, you know, enumerating, you know, some exponential number of possible solutions. Right. So uh, in, in essence, that is what we are asking. Right. And I like to say that, you know, if we were physicists, right, we, w we might have just said, well, obviously, you know, there are some situations where you need brute force search. Let's just declare that to be a law of nature. Right. And Nobel Prize. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We could have given ourselves Nobel Prizes for the discovery of that law. And then if later it turned out that there was some crazy algorithm that made P equals NP, then we could, just, we could just give ourselves more <laughs> Nobel Prizes. Right. So, you know, because we're mathematicians, we have to call this a conjecture. No, you know, because the truth is no one has, you know, in in 50 or 60 years, hey, okay, no one has been able to rule out that there could be. Uh, polynomial time algorithms to solve all the problems in NP, right? I wouldn't expect that that exists, right? It would be, you know, certainly one of the greatest mathematical or scientific surprises ever in the history of humanity, I would say, okay? But, uh, uh, we, you know, we don't actually have the proof as of yet that, that, uh, uh, that, 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 that brute force search for NP problems is ever uh, inherently required. I want to linger on what you just spoke about, the yeah. implications of P equaling MP. If we are able to find that proof, how does that change science, technology, research? What is the actual implication of proving this? Yeah, it's a good question. So the easiest implication to understand would be that essentially all of the encryption that we use, you know, for, for, for the internet would be broken. Okay, and uh, and and so that that doesn't mean merely you know the <laughs> the particular systems yeah. that are that would be broken by quantum computers, right? right? Uh, 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 like RSA or the these systems based on factoring, right? Now we mean all possible crypto systems that are based on hard computational problems, right? Which means just about everything, you know, with with like some very very you know rare exceptions, like what's called the one-time pad, right? Which is not based on a hard computational problem, but it requires this enormous pre-shared key, right? Or, or, or there's another thing called quantum cryptography that would not be broken, but it would require being able to send qubits over the internet, you know, which would require upgrading the whole physical architecture of the internet, okay? Other than that, all the other types of cryptography that we use would be broken. So for example, you could have no cryptocurrencies anymore. Okay. Bitcoin would be broken. Ethereum would be broken, right? It's all based on, you know, the belief that various computational problems are hard, which if P equaled NP, you could no longer have that because, you know, then solving these problems like, you know, mining, you know, new coins, you know, inverting these hash functions, it would be no harder than it is to check the solutions. But, you know, I think there would also be pretty massive implications for AI. Right. So basically what it would mean would be that, you know, there would be a fast algorithm to solve the problem of find the optimal weights for this neural network. Right. Where by optimal weights, I mean the weight that sort of minimize the loss on the training data. Right. Like find the, the setting of parameters for this neural network that does the best, that causes the neural net to do the best possible job at 
predicting, you know, uh, all the text on the internet or predicting, you know, whatever else is in its training data. Okay. And so, uh, uh, as you may have heard, uh, this right now is a problem that, you know, uh, uh, mind-boggling amounts of computing power are being spent on, right? Uh, OpenAI is right now, you know, trying to raise, Sam Altman says, trillions of dollars, uh, uh, ultimately, to just build bigger and bigger clusters of GPUs, you know, in order to, you know, uh, well, a large part of it is just to do this problem of uh, training neural nets, finding the optimal setting of weights, Right, so this would have massive implications for that. Okay, in fact, I I can't resist sharing something with you that uh, twenty years ago, when people were talking about why is P versus NP such an important question, right? They would sometimes say, "Well, look, just you know, philosophically, right? If P equal to NP, what what that would really mean? What it would mean that you know." finding solutions would be not much harder than checking solutions, right? And so, for example, you could ask your computer to find the optimal compression of Wikipedia, right? Find, like, the, the, the best possible way of compressing or, you know, re relatedly predicting, you know, all the text that there is on Wikipedia. And now they said, plausibly, in order to do that, you would have to, you know, your optimal compression would have to encode many of the secrets of intelligence, you know, of sort of the whole world that had led to all this text, you know, because like the best way to predict something is to actually have a model of the world that led to all this text being written, right? And so, so, so plausibly that would be, you know, revolutionary for AI, right? And so like I, I, I use this argument in talks, you know, that I gave, you know, like, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, I thought it was a super interesting intellectual point. What I didn't imagine was that someone would actually do that, would sort of take it literally and say, you know what, even if P is not equal to NP, let's just build, you know, take some gigantic data centers right. <laughs> and let's just do the best we can at building a neural net that predicts, you know, the text on the internet as well as it possibly can, right? But that is what... Uh, initially open AI and now a whole, you know, Anthropic and DeepMind and a, a, a Meta and a whole bunch of other companies are, are doing. And, you know, that is uh, uh, changing the world in, in ways that, that, uh, uh, that we all see. I mean, so this is an important point about the P versus NP problem, right? If Even if P is not equal to NP, that doesn't mean that whenever you encounter uh, an NP problem that's not in P, you have to give up. Right. Maybe there is special structure in this input, you know, or in, in the kinds of inputs that arise in the real world that makes the problem easier than the worst case. Right. And that seems to be exactly what has happened in AI. Right. It was hard to predict that in advance. You know, OpenAI had to actually raise the, the millions of dollars and, you know, build out the data centers and do the experiment. But, you know, but we now know that, yes, you get these large language models that, uh, you know, can uh, uh, converse with us in you know, ways that I think if you showed it to anyone 10 or 20 years ago, they would have said, yes, this this passes the Turing test. Yes, this is this is true AI, you know, because we've we've sort of been exposed to it. Then, you know, therefore we uh, we do still argue about it.